don't know what else I can say about this. It's pretty self-explanatory. Jerry Jones, the idiot pastor who burned the Koran, endangering U.S. troops and Americans everywhere, has hung President Obama in effigy outside his church. Why? Because he's Terry Jones. Egotist, bigot, nutcase, and fool. His church has been described as cult-like, with him controlling their every move, which doesn't surprise me because I really do believe that Terry Jones thinks that he is God, or God's appointed. And there was a mysterious death in the desert. 38-year-old Ian Thorson died apparently of dehydration and exposure after being ejected from a Buddhist retreat that had developed into what outsiders say was really a cult. His wife, Christine McNally, 39, was found delirious. They'd gone to this retreat for a special three-year, three-month, and three-day silent meditation, but were asked to leave after a year and a half. Uh, why they were asked to leave is quite questionable. The um, leader of the re uh, retreat, Michael Roach, said that it involved domestic violence where one stabbed the other, but when they did the autopsy and the examination of Christine McNally, nobody found any knife wounds or... Um, any evidence of a previous domestic battery. Anyway, they were asked to leave after a year and a half, and they then went to live in a cave near the group. Six weeks later, she called 911. I assume she had a cell phone. And by the time they got there, he was dead. No criminal investigation is currently underway because apparently they voluntarily went to go live in the cave. Their questions remain, however, especially from their families, about the influence of this retreat's leader, the Buddhist monk Michael Roach, and the sway he had over the patrons of his retreat, and as well as the exact circumstances as the of the couple's leaving. And we also have some megachurch domestic violence. Creflo Dollar, the founder and pastor of a megachurch in Atlanta, World Changers Church International, was arrested for alleged domestic battery on his 15-year-old daughter. Now, she says he choked her, threw her to the ground, punched her, and hit her with his shoe after they got into an argument over whether or not she could go to a party. He, of course, has a different version of the story, but her 19-year-old sister corroborates everything she said. Ironically, Dollar was a favorite um, of Rudy Eugene, the naked guy shot death in Miami after eating somebody else's face. A young man in Minnesota was wearing a rosary in honor of his grandmother who has cancer. Now his, the rosary was a gift from his grandmother. I'm not going to mention his last name. You know, I think there's too much of that uh, going around when, you, when you're involving minors, the show, showing their pictures, putting their names. But uh, the links are below if you, you want to know. Anyway, his first name is Jake, and he attends Coon Rabbits High School in Minnesota. And he was ordered to remove the rosary because apparently some gangs use rosaries to identify themselves. Now high school, high school students don't have the same rights at school that they do in the outside world. And this is because schools need to be able to control the environment for the safety of students and staff. And this is understood. There have been lots of lawsuits and this is established. But there are always and always will be and always should be continuing conversations about just exactly what the parameters of these limits are. Now, a, ro a rosary is a religious object to most people, and it's unfortunate that some gang members are using them to identify themselves as gang members. But schools need to be more careful in how they apply their rules, if only to avoid the outraged uproar that could occur. I mean, what if gangs start wearing crosses? Uh, can you just imagine people trying to ban crosses in schools? I mean, that would be considered completely unacceptable, and you'd have demonstrations outside the school. Uh, and, of course, if there were gangs started wearing Buddhist, Muslim, Hindu, or even atheist symbols, you know darn well the uh, good Christians around there wouldn't care. So the rules need to apply to all. When you start to restrict someone wearing a rosary or wearing a cross, it uh, refers to all sorts of symbols of beliefs and positions. And uh, that's why this is important. Now, the school said they didn't know why he was wearing the rosary. Well, in this case, it seems that a simple conversation with a student should have satisfied them, just as a simple explanation to the student and to his parents 
should have satisfied them. Seems there was a real serious communication gap here. And as I said before, the rules should be the same for religious and non-student religious students as well. A student wearing a "There is no God" T-shirt should be allowed as long as there are students wearing "God is Love" T-shirts. Students wearing garb that exclaims or implies that non-Christian or non-believing students are going to hell should not be allowed unless other students can wear t-shirts ridiculing religion or the religious. And now we go to Texas, which is always a fun place to visit in the news. A man named Courtney Royale, who is currently serving a life sentence, lost his suit to be allowed to practice his religious beliefs. Beliefs that involve vampires. The civil rights lawsuit was rejected Thursday by a federal appeals court. In the filing, he described himself as Vampsh, Black, Sleep, Black Sheep, League of Doom, Gardaman, Family, Circle, Master, Vampire, High Priest. And he wanted to practice what he called West African spiritualism and 18th century Catholicism, marked by prayer to Africans reincarnated by blood. And he argued that it was no different from unproven Christian beliefs. And he's got a point. And then there was good old Governor Phil Bryan of Mississippi, who um, did a, a speech to the American Legion Boys State in Hattiesburg, and he told them that he fondly remembered praying in school as a boy, and he said he didn't think it, it hurt anyone at all, and uh, he felt that, you know, there, there's got to be a way to have non-denominational prayer. Well, you know what? I actually kind of agree, but disagree with him. Because I think that students should be exposed to prayer from all denominations. I mean, the United States is composed of people with a wide variety of religious beliefs, as well as a number of those who are non-religious. For example, I think a Druid ceremony would be a lovely thing to behold. As you can see in this picture, everyone is not a participant in the ceremony, and yet no one seems to be harmed by it. Today's students could learn a lot by this. Anyway, thanks for listening.